Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Automation Engineer. We are in chapter 3 and we are still continuing with 3.2 TAA design, the part 2 of this tutorial. In continuation with the previous tutorial, we are talking in continuation to the test design, that is test automation architecture design, where we are talking about the identify areas where abstraction can deliver benefits. It's another part of it where generally we try to design. There are certain considerations which we consider as a part of it. Now further, the very first thing what we are trying to understand from the point of abstraction is what abstraction is basically going to help you with. So abstraction in a TAA enables technology independence in that the same test suite can be used in different test environments. That means it includes different target dependencies or have different technologies which can be adapted or it can be portable to different uh, environments as well. So that's where we try to create an automation framework in such a way that if it is, it can be exported well and moved to another environment and the setup, then obviously it will be beneficial. In addition, the vendor neutrality is assured, which avoids kick lock-in effects for a task. That means the automation solutions, the settings can also be used equally. Abstraction also improves maintainability and adaptability to new or evolving SAD technologies. On the other side, the TA needs to discuss with the stakeholder in software development, quality assurance and testing which levels of abstraction to use in which areas of the task. Of course, deciding this will become really important. In what depth is it going to be a concrete level, a logical level information required to manage the information with respect to the abstraction? For example, which interface of the test adaption, adaptation and test execution layer need to be externalized. So there are a few things <coughs> which you need to be managed internally, and there are a few things which are managed from the third party source as well, like web services and API, the things will be decided here. The more abstraction is used, <coughs> excuse me, the more abstraction is used for a TAA, the more flexible it is with the respect to further evolution or transitioning to a new approach or technology. Of course, the abstraction can really help you to come up with the more modification, easy to transmit, easy to transfer the information. This comes at the cost of the larger initial investments, and of course that invites a lot of inputs, a lot of effort, and so on, while the detailed ROI considerations are the responsibility of the TAM, that is test automation manager, and the test automation engineer needs to provide input to the ROI analysis. In continuation further, we have the next topic as understanding SUT technologies and interconnection with the TAS. How it will be uh, working within the technologies and how it can be interconnected with other environments of TAS. The access to the test information, the test interfaces of the SUT is central to any automated test execution. Of course, that's a very common thing which we need to understand. The access can be available at the following levels, that is software level, API level, protocol level and service level. I think we really understand from the previous tutorials uh, of this chapter that there are three or four different levels or layers where we generally have to manage every certain thing what you're creating or creating a milestone where we prepare or define or identify at these levels where software level, API level, protocol level and service level are the four levels where we need to understand the automated test execution. In addition, the TAA needs to decide about the paradigm of the interaction of the TAA to be used for the interaction between the TAS and the SUT as well. Whenever the TAS and SUT are separated by APIs, protocols or services, this need to be implemented. These paradigms will include the following event-driven paradigm which derives uh, the interaction via events being exchanged on the event bus. Client-server paradigm, the drives, which drives the interaction via service invocation from the service requester to service provider, as well as the peer-to-peer -peer paradigm, which drives the interaction via service invocation from either peer. So these are certain standard protocols which you need to follow when you're talking about the paradigms and uh, the steps required for the same. In the end, uh, we do have a lot more things to understand, but this is the last topic for today's tutorial. I like understand SUT environment. The environment equally plays a vital role that what kind of setup and what kind of environment will be required for this. 
And SUT can be standalone software or software that works only in relation to other softwares. That means creating certain kind of dependencies or some additional information like soft systems or softwares which are required to run a particular application, including hardware, individual components, environments, and simulations, simulators, a lot of many things which will comprise of an environment together to finally make a piece of code work or a particular system to be complete. Examples of test environment include uh, sample uses of these kind of following things. What you see here, a computer with both the SUT and the TAS, useful for testing a software application. Individual network computers for an SUT and TAS respectively, that means the SUT and the TAS uses two different resources, like could be one server, one application, the client, and on the computer. Additional test devices to st stimulate and observe the technical interfaces of an SUT, useful for testing softwares, example of set-top box. Network test devices to emulate the operational environment of the SUT, or simulators to simulate the physical environment of the SUT. So as you understand, there are different ways by which the application can be utilized or can work for you at this point of time. So as we understand the environment, that's all for today in this particular part two. We will have one more part of this particular series, that is 3.2 test design, to wind up with this particular topic. And then we'll continue further. Should you have anything else to be discussed, team, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address you and answer your queries. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep understanding the contest. Thanks for watching the video team, and happy learning.